Yo, welcome to the studio space. Finally, this video is long overdue. I got access to this place in May of 2022. So I've been here for over a year and a half. I just kind of came in, got right to work and never bothered to do a tour of this place. It's changed a couple times already. It'll probably change a couple more times before it's all said and done, but yeah, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted like a recording studio or some kind of creative space. And finally, after doing YouTube for eight years, I got access to this. It's nice because when you have people come over, you don't always want them in your home if you're gonna do a full workday in the studio. And I love being able to turn the key on this place at the end of the day, go to my home and not be surrounded by a bunch of stuff that reminds me that I should probably be working. There were three main things I was looking for out of a space to produce. Number one, it had to have a lot of natural light when I wanted it, and it had to be controllable when I didn't. The last place I produced in was like a cave. You got that weird casino effect where you had no idea how long you'd been at work or what time it was outside. Hated that. That's obviously not an issue in here. This place even has a really nice view of the city. Two, I prefer to have really high ceilings. Even though it can be a challenge to acoustically treat the room, I like being able to get lights and stands and whatnot up and out of the way of the shot. Three, I really wanted something this time where I didn't just build a set in a corner, but I could really utilize all of the space. And in order for that to work, it has to be aesthetic from every angle. So naturally, I fell in love when I saw this place. All the exposed brick, the exposed timber, the original ironwork from 1908. The original build out here was like all white when they came through and modernized it. So I did have somebody come in and do black on the accent walls in the main room in here because it's just a mood. All this is is just a one bed, one bath residential apartment, about 800 square feet. So it has everything you'd expect to find in a home, including probably the least utilized kitchen ever. In the fridge, I only ever have like a Brita pitcher, cold brew, spinach, and kale. That's it. It is pretty nice to have a full bath off your studio space though. In its current layout, it's basically set up in three different areas. This is the editing area over here where I edit all the videos. All that setup is really dialed in. It's all cable managed. We're not gonna talk a lot about it today because it's probably gonna go through some pretty major changes here over the next couple months. Over on this side, we've got the main talking headset and the gaming desk, both of which you see on camera a lot. The gaming desk is designed to be wiped and reset with whatever I'm reviewing at the time. So it's not cable managed. It's an absolute disaster underneath that desk. There's tons of monitor power supplies just so I can switch things back and forth and it's not a big deal. We are gonna kind of focus in on that today because I'm gonna show you the stuff that I use all the time when I'm not reviewing, the stuff that never goes back in the box, never goes back in the closet, the stuff that lives on that desk. This is the bedroom and it's set up to be what I call the acquisition room. This is anytime I use a product and it's not like in the wild on a computer desk. So anytime a product is in isolation. So whether that's a top down handling shot or this setup behind me where I do the infinite black and white background, all that goes down in here. I don't do any talking head stuff in here because you can hear that the acoustics in this room are horrible compared to the other room. This is also where all the props live, all the motion systems, all the camera gear, all that stuff stays in here. At this point, I'm shooting 100% on Sony, a combination of the a7S 3 and the a7 IV, just a powerhouse AB camera combo. All right, we're back at the gaming desk. First things first, this desk is from Uplift Desk. I have five desks in here, four of them are Uplift. I don't have a partnership with them anymore. I just keep buying them because they work and I've never had a single issue with any of them. The only negative thing I'll say is I sprung for the walnut hardwood for this space because it's on camera a lot more and it looks better on camera than the laminate does, but this scratches and gouges a lot more easily. If your desk isn't gonna be on camera, just get the laminate, it's way cheaper and it's basically bulletproof. The thing I get asked about the most on this desk for real is this X wool desk mat from Grove Made. It's really expensive. It's like $150. I have one of these on each desk. It really helps protect this wood surface. Looks really good on camera. Great neutral background. Plays great with the light that comes through these blinds. The only thing I don't like about it is this. You can move this entire setup around on this desk because the wood is really slick and there's no backing on this. So definitely something to consider before you spring for a $150 desk mat. 
my webcam, you probably guessed I'm still using the Insta360 Link, who's also sponsoring today's video, and they've got a couple new updates to their firmware. Because I put such a high priority on visual quality, I actually used to hook up one of my mirrorless cameras to my capture card anytime I had a web call or a meeting or anything. But because this uses a half inch sensor and it does 4K, it looks so good that I just skip all that and keep the Insta360 close by. And on almost every call, I have somebody comment how cool it is that this little camera can follow my face around because it's on this little three axis gimbal. It already did a bunch of cool stuff like hand gestures that you can use to control the AI tracking to toggle that on and off. You can also control the zoom just by making a little L and pulling that up or down to zoom the camera in and out. It also has desk view mode. So while you're streaming, you can point the camera down at your desktop if you wanna show off your peripherals or show how you grip your mouse or whatever. Whenever you're done, it just brings the camera right back to your face. It can also track you full body. If you're somebody that likes to get up and get active on your streams, making this one of the most dynamic face cams out there for streamers. And now you can control all those features on your phone without even needing to download an app. You just scan the QR code and you're in. You get full, complete, like really responsive control over the gimbal itself and you can toggle all the modes without having to walk up to the camera and without having to use hand gestures. And if you make a lot of vertical content, they've got a new hero portrait mode, which gives you full 4K in a portrait, which is perfect for Instagram or TikTok. What'd you think I was gonna do? Dance? Click the link down in the description to grab an Insta360 link for yourself and huge thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring today. The monitor was a tough one, but this is the PG27AQN from ASUS. This is the God tier FPS monitor. It's 27 inches flat, fast IPS, 1440p, 360 hertz with ULMB2 motion blur reduction. It's just phenomenal for FPS, and that's what I play here primarily. The reason why this was so tough is because once you see OLED, it's really hard to unsee that, but I consistently play better on this monitor than I do my OLED. If I played more single player stuff, it would probably be an OLED here. I only ever run a single monitor because I do all my content creation stuff at the editing desk and I don't stream yet, and I never put these on arms because I do swap monitors on and off here all the time. The desktop monitor speaker are the Steel Series Arena 7. This is a 2.1 system. There's a sub on the floor down there. There's a full review of these on the channel. I just don't listen to speakers a lot in here. I primarily work in headphones or IEMs, the DT1990 or the Blessing 2 Dusk. Truth told, the only reason why these are on the desk is just for the visual effect on camera. A lot of people use speakers in their gaming setup so it looks familiar. It helps to fill the space and the RGB hitting the brick creates like a more rich shot on camera. That's it. The DAC amp is the iFi Zendac V2, another long running favorite. Looks really aesthetic on the desk, sounds really good, volume control feels really smooth. It's got bass boost, it's got power matching for sensitive IEMs, and it's got a balanced out. Love it. 90% of the time, if I'm gaming, it's in a wireless headset. I just love the convenience of wireless. We've had some great ones come out, but the one that finally earned the spot on the desk, the Odyssey Maxwell. Shouldn't be any big surprise. This is the ultraviolet edition. It came out for Xbox. It was limited to like a thousand copies. The colorway is obnoxious and I love it. I still think the Stealth Pro edges these slightly for imaging and Call of Duty, but the thing with these is everything sounds great on them. So I wear them the majority of the time that I'm in the studio. I have a really expensive pair of Focal Batiste that I also wear sometimes, but these are on my head the majority of the time that I'm in here. The keyboard's a no-brainer. This is the Wooting 60 HE transplanted into a Tofu 60 Redux case with the Wooting 60% silicone rest. There's videos about all that stuff on the channel. Competition from SteelSeries and Razer is getting closer in terms of performance, but what always brings me back to the Wooting is the fact that you can make it look like a custom keyboard, not a gaming keyboard, and two, the firmware software experience, phenomenal. There's no full-time control software like everybody else. You just go on the website, make your adjustments, flash the firmware, and you're back at it. The new case and the new plate should be showing up here in just a few days. I'll have a full review on that as soon as it lands. Mousepad is a Saturn Pro from Lethal Gaming Gear. I have lost track of how long this has been on the desk. It's a medium. It's before the logo switchover. I try everything that comes through here, but I always come back to a control surface and I always come back to this one. We gotta talk about the mouse because I ran the MZ1 wireless for the bulk of 2022. I think I gave it mouse of the year. The majority of 2023, it's probably my longest running main. I didn't think anything was ever gonna bump that mouse. The shape just works really well for me. Until this showed up. This is the Pulsar X2H. This is their new shape. It's got the thinner waist and the fatter ass in the back. I love this shape. I'm running this with the 4K dongle. Feels incredible in game. I'm putting this through a long-term review because I'll probably give this my highest recommendation for a mouse ever. And I wanna make sure there's no QC stuff, but I love what Pulsar is doing in the space right now. And yeah, there is a controller on my desk. This is the Envision Pro Wireless from Scuf. This is PC specific. I just did a video on this. 
I really liked it and I got absolutely demolished in the comments of that video. I obviously don't know a lot about the controller space. I wildly underestimated how passionate the user base is. I guess the big thing is it doesn't have Hall Effect sticks, which I didn't even know was a thing, but people are super pissed because evidently it develops stick drift over time and the only recourse is to completely replace it. So I don't see myself transitioning to controller full-time as an FPS player, but I am committed to putting as many miles as I can on that long-term just as a reviewer because I was not ready for the smoke. The PC that runs all this lives on the floor, which freaks a lot of people out, but the exposed ceilings in here, they're so old and I'm on the top floor, I get a lot of dust from the ceiling. It's actually safer on the floor. This system is an i9-13900KF with an RTX 4080. Believe Believe it or not, I've still never got my hands on a 4090. All that is in the Fractal Design North case, far and away my favorite case that's probably ever been released. It just looks really aesthetic with the walnut wood, the brass accents. Fractal knocked it out with that one. The chair I use over here is a secret lab. I think it's a 2020 edition. I had this wrapped in plastic in my garage when we lived in Washington State because it's fabric and my cats would absolutely annihilate this. But since I got the dedicated studio space, it's not an issue. I decided to use this and put it through a long-term review because there's such a negative stigma around these gaming style chairs, especially because creators have affiliate codes and they push them all the time. I probably have an affiliate code somewhere. I have no idea what it is. I love this chair. It doesn't hurt my back at all. I can't say that about my Herman Miller Aeron Type C that's sitting over there. I was a bigger guy, so I thought I'd get the bigger chair. I wish I would have gone with the Type B Aeron because that chair hurts my back. This one doesn't. I can sit here for like four, six hours, no issues at all. I got nothing bad to say at all about the gaming chairs. So yeah, there it is. That's the studio. This is where I spend the bulk of my time doing content for YouTube and managing our other businesses. And it's kind of the best of both worlds because we live in the building right next door. So this isn't in my home, but I don't really have a commute to work either. That little sequence you saw at the beginning of the video, that's actually me walking to work. It takes about three minutes. Over the next few weeks, we will be taking a deeper look at the editing setup. I've got some really exciting stuff happening over there that I think is gonna make for some really fun content. And let me know in the comments if you're interested in spending Spending some more time in the acquisition room, talking about some of the gear that I use to produce for YouTube and some of the techniques I use to get the shots in there. Any questions about anything, please, please leave them down in the comments. I'll answer everything I possibly can. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support over the years. And thank you for letting me wake up every day, come here and live my dream job. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay up.